What's going on guys, Sam here, and in today's video we're going to be starting a series of episodes that go into the problems with modern CGI and VFX and how to avoid a lot of those problems in your own films. So we're going to be diving into a lot of great case studies and uh, content of that nature as well as some of my own experience on projects and I'm just going to be explaining to you guys how to avoid some of the common issues that people have when they're first starting out in visual effects or even people who have been in the industry for years years just explaining how to get the best results out of your visual effects. So let's get into the first episode right now. I'm sure many of you watching this video have noticed what appears to be a decline in the quality of visual effects and CGI over the past decade. It's actually starting to become a big problem and something that is really impacting the experience of cinema in a negative way for many people. But what is the problem with modern CGI? Well, there's a lot of issues such as budget constraints, time constraints, which is probably one of the biggest issues for many artists, and there's a lot of other factors as well. But ultimately, the big issue which is plaguing modern VFX as a whole can be traced back to one overarching issue. Poor filmmaking and poor decision making in the director's chair and on the part of the major studios producing these films. I'm talking about lazy filmmaking and an over-reliance on CGI as a crutch for filmmaking, which results in impossible timetables and deadlines for artists as well as poorly captured scenes that are not grounded in reality, lack creativity and cinematic staples such as lighting and composition, and therefore give themselves away as being fake. So that is what this series is going to be primarily about and what I'm going to be teaching you to avoid in these upcoming episodes. When directors and or production companies choose to shoot their films in a studio on a blue screen with a lot of CGI, they have nearly unlimited options and it's going to save them a lot of money in comparison to building sets or shooting on location. Because it requires much less crew and time to prep the set and shoot the scenes, which is ultimately the most expensive part of the production process. The sacrifice that you make here, however, is that the quality will not be as high as we've seen over the past decade. What I really want to talk about in this episode is grounding your visual effects shots in reality. So take a look at this behind the scenes footage from the original Transformers movie, which came out in 2007. Uh, now, I, I know the Transformers movies get a lot of flack, but I'm going to be using this as a case study because not only did this movie have groundbreaking visual effects at the time, the visual effects, I would argue, are better than nearly any big blockbuster movie that you see today, with the exception of a few filmmakers who implement the techniques that I'm about to share with you. But why is that? Look at how much effort goes into these sets and shooting on location. Weather conditions, having to light massive areas, choreographing action, pyrotechnics, stunts, communicating with large crews, and getting the camera in the right place in the action while you're on set and knowing that you must capture what you need to capture on that day, otherwise important pieces of your film could be missing. This was a huge undertaking both in preparation and execution because all these things need to be scheduled, coordinated, rehearsed, and set up in sync with each other. Safety precautions need to be taken and the shot needs to be nailed on the first try in many cases because a lot of times there's no redoing some of these shots. So there's not much room for error. And what the big studios have realized is that maybe you won't get this exact result, but you can get a half decent result and one that is passable to the average person on a much smaller budget with much less crew, preparation, and time by shooting on a blue screen and relying on CGI to fill in the gaps but you lose what was mentioned before, the grounding of your scene in reality. Because ultimately, even your average person can tell that something is off with the lighting, the matching of the real footage with your CG background, etc. if your scene was shot in a studio. This was something that I discovered while working on my recent film Gemini, because I was forced to shoot on location. I didn't have access to a studio space or massive blue screens, so I had to find places that I could shoot and then effectively blend my CGI elements with that location in post. This required more work in some cases because it can be difficult to blend CGI objects with real landscapes or scenes, you know, rotoscoping, matching the lighting perfectly, and blending the regions in your scene where the fake imagery meets the real imagery. But it ultimately provided several important benefits on the flip side. The real footage was excellent reference for the lighting of my CGI elements. The real elements of the scene grounded my shot in reality and distracted from the imperfections of the CGI by serving as the main focus for many of the shots. And it added a level of authenticity to what you're seeing on the screen, helping to blur the lines between what is real and what is fake. Also, if you want to have any hope of having your CGI elements match and fit into your scene at all, you're going to have to elevate their quality and match it very well with the original footage. 
So it essentially raises the standards that your CGI needs to hit. And this is the best way to create convincing VFX by using practical on location shooting as much as possible, and then combining or adding CGI elements to your real physical location. At least that's the case that I found for small indie budget film productions. If you want to learn more about how you can implement these practices in your own films, I have several courses that go over creating and compositing the scenes that you see on screen now using the techniques I just mentioned inside of Unreal Engine, which is completely free to use and it's making a huge impact in the film industry. So if you want to learn more about these courses and how to add stunning visual effects to your films, check out the video in the upper right hand corner of your screen and also check out the link below for all the courses that I have available on my website. It'll change your life as a filmmaker if you're looking to add VFX to your films. So doing as much as you can in camera is very important, but you also need to keep in mind that your film is not about the VFX. It's about the story, and the VFX are only there to enhance your story. So my approach to shooting Gemini was essentially to shoot it so that I could not bother adding in the VFX and I would still be happy with the look of my film. That's why I chose to shoot at this destroyed dairy farm in my local area. It had the perfect look for what I was going for, and it allowed for most of the elements you see in the frame to be real. The only fake elements that you see in these shots are the buildings and the city. The rubble, debris, and landscape are grounding the shot in reality, which looks much more convincing than if I'd added this character into a fully CGI shot. I also found another important trick, which was adding fog to the scene. Fog and haze is one of my favorite visual elements to add to a scene as it is, but in this case, it gave me a great way to blend some of the CGI elements, like these buildings, with the real fog and the foreground elements. It gave me a great way to smoothly and convincingly transition from the real elements to the fake elements, and also was a way to create mystery and the uneasy feeling that I wanted. So ultimately what I'm saying is, unless the story requires it, don't make the CGI elements your centerpiece for your shot. Nine times out of 10, that's not necessary and it's only going to pull your audience out of the film. So focus on what's important, your characters and your story. The VFX are only there to support those two elements, so always keep that in mind. So that's all the time that I have this week on this topic. If you guys like this kind of video, let me know and I will continue to make videos on this topic. I have a part two of this video coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. If you do like it, leave a comment, subscribe, and like this video. It really helps a lot. And also don't forget to check out those courses over at boundless-resource.com. The links will be in the description if you are interested in adding VFX to your own films. So thank you guys for watching and have a good one.